Each and every one of us has the right to think freely. We cannot be indifferent to the fate of people affected by conflict and oppression anywhere. There is still no more powerful or revolutionary idea than the principle that we are all born equal. We are all equal. There is no power on earth that has the right to tell us otherwise. And no more important cause than to defend the fundamental human rights of our fellow men and women. All great success in life is preceded by long sustained periods of focused effort on a single goal, the most important goal, with the determination to stay with it until it is complete. Throughout history, we find that every man or woman who achieves anything lasting and worthwhile had engaged in long, often unappreciated hours, weeks, months, and even years of concentrated, disciplined work in a particular direction. When I stopped thinking about myself, and I started thinking about how can I be useful to other people. And I think that I did not grow up and become uh, the person I am until I was less focused on me and I was more focused on how could I be useful? Who could I help? Because the amazing thing is when you help somebody, that gives you confidence. To live totally means before you fall dead, every aspect of life has been explored. Nothing has been left unexplored. Yes? Before you fall dead, even if you do not explore the cosmos, at least this piece of life you must know it in its entirety. That much you must do to yourself, isn't it? That's living totally. That you experience the whole of this, all dimensions of what this is. You did not leave anything untouched. As you grow, you lose certain homies because it's called closing the gap. This is the gap when we start. This is the gap as you grow. Notice how you grow and they don't. So how do you close the gap? You got to come back down. When you come back down, you lose. So you got to keep going up. That's why closing that gap got to be them catching up to you. And if they don't catch up, you got to leave them behind. <laughs> I know that I'm example, I know 100% in the pitch and outside the pitch. So I'm always smile, I'm happy man, I'm blessed that I play in a fantastic club, I have a fantastic family, I have four kids, I'm healthy, I have everything. So the rest, it doesn't interfere on me, so I'm very, very glad. The most important that I enjoy the football, I enjoy my life, I'm very happy. I've had a Rolls Royce and I've had a Toyota, and I can tell you up front, I'd rather drive the Rolls Royce. So that doesn't make you shallow, that means that you have goals and you like the finer things in life. And for many of you listening to this, that's something you're going to chase. And I want you to have those things. For some of you, those things don't matter to you at all. The material things in your life don't matter and that's perfectly fine. But for those of you that want to chase the material things, I want you to have them. But by no means am I going to let you think, because I've been there, that somehow that's going to fulfill you. When I see people who don't sometimes have the results in leadership, it's because they've taken shortcuts. I had a friend one time tell me that the longest distance between two points is a shortcut. And I think that's very true. So I think um, all leaders count the price. Uh, they understand that it's going to continually be uphill. And it's okay with them. And it's okay with them because the prize that's before them is greater than the price that they're paying today. I interrupt too much. I jump in too much. I finish people's sentences for them too often. And that's an ego thing, almost like I think I can say it better than them. In fact, I'm so bad at it, I'll be honest with you. Before every show, I tell them, hey, this isn't like any other interview you've been on before. I'm gonna interrupt you, you can interrupt me, we'll make it like a real conversation. And all of my guests always politely say, wonderful, that's great, I want you to cut me off. And, but the truth is, that's not how a great conversation goes. It's not two people interrupting each other all the time. It's one person talking, another person listening until they're finished speaking, and then responding. If you don't feel strong every day, that's okay, and it's normal. And every day, something new can inspire you, and a small thought or idea or action can change the course of your day, your week, your month, your year. You're never alone, and you're never stuck, no matter how down you feel.
find what puts a pep in your step, react to what's inspiring you by setting that into motion creatively or otherwise, wear something crazy, go on a walk at sunrise. The universe starts off without any meaning and there really is no point to it, but it's possible for life to evolve and it does and we eventually show up and we are meaning makers and we care. Initially, we just care because that comes along with our instincts as part of our biology. But as we think and reflect and care, we begin, things begin to matter more to us. I saw my mom adding water to the milk, put it, like, put it in the microwave and telling me to come eat. I didn't say anything. I just ate, but I understood that we were broke. I understood really quickly. I didn't say anything, but in my mind, I came just, I, then I came back and I told my mom, yeah, I'm going to play football for Anderlecht later, and you'll see, everything is going to change. And it's not going to, when I retire, we will we'll be good. I used to work at a car wash. I made $30 a day from 8 in the morning to 8 at night. So they basically let you know you got to live off your tips. So you got to really go hard. And so I used to let them know I'd do anything for you. I wash the car, if you leave me $20, I'll fill your tank up. If you left me with enough time, I'll put your cassettes in alphabetical order. Whatever it is, I think that may be the small difference between the, the ones who really go get it and the ones who just talking. If you worry, you don't have to worry. And if you don't worry, you have to worry, okay? Because what I mean is, um, if you're worrying about what can go wrong, you, chances are you will create the protections against that thing going wrong, and therefore that's good. And if you're not worrying about the things that are gonna go wrong, then they'll probably, the things you never expect are gonna come and hit you. Maybe the hardest part is you, if, if you teach, you have to live your teaching. Mm. You can't uh, say you do not as I do, but do as I say. No, no. You know what's right. Just do right. You don't really have to ask anybody. The truth is, right may not be expedient. It may not be profitable, but it will satisfy your soul. Every single one of you, every single one of you who is struggling right now, you need to understand this. What you're going through right now is necessary. What's happening right now is you are forging the fucking skills. You are forging the determination. You are forging the fortitude. You are forging all the fucking things that nobody else is gaining because they're sitting on their hands and you're willing to push through. Do not, do not go into a job thinking about money. Because if you go into a job thinking about money, you're not going to get the most out of it. If you go into a job loving it, being passionate about it, you're going to get everything you got coming out of it. But if you go into that job saying, I'm going to make a whole lot of money, this job's going to pay me this, you ain't going to get nothing out of it. You have to love it first. And I felt like I've always loved rap more than I love money. I've always loved rap more than I love fame. I love rap more than I love anything. I urge you to let this current moment push you to improve yourself in all areas of your life, at work, at home, activism, spirituality, wherever you can find hope, follow it. And remember, you are never alone. Lean on that strength of togetherness. Keep the collective strong. Stay focused. Don't talk about what you're gonna do. Don't just dream about what you're gonna do. Don't criticize somebody else for what they're not doing. You be it. And I have these three steps of success. I was just talking about them in the other room. And you start with succeed. Succeed is to make it. Everybody says it's the easy part. It's the easiest part, but it's not easy, okay? Success is the second part, which is maintain it. That's the tough part. And once you understand how to do all that, then you become successful, right? But in those three words, if you look at them, they all have the words suck in them. Because <laughs> the more you grow, the more they suck, all right? That's hard work, because not hard for me running, it's hard for my brain. It's hard for my mind to wake up in the morning, like last night I maybe went to sleep at 2 because I watched a movie or something and then you have to, the alarm goes 6.30. But I worked hard and it, it paid off. And that's exactly what I want to tell these guys. 
because it's difficult because they have everything today iPhones, iPads, friends, they go out, they can go already to dinner, you know, they have everything. So it's so hard to work hard. If you want to become successful in life, young man, he said, number one, you got to change your mindset. He said, you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. Number two, practice OQP, only quality people. Third thing he said, develop your communication skills because once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. He said, those are three major things that you want to work on. Did school fail you or you failed school? School failed me. School's failing entrepreneurs every single day. Because? At, because it's not built to, for entrepreneurship. It's built for workers. You know, if you're being taught to play within the lines. And there, there's nothing being taught that maps to the entrepreneurial market. As a matter of fact, my biggest cynicism when I sit across an entrepreneur today is if they are too successful at school. I probably look at Ivy League grads starting startups right now with more of a negative light. So if you look at everyone on Instagram, you might think, man, they're all these happy, beautiful people and I'm not that good looking and I'm not happy. So I must suck, you know, and that's gonna make people sad. So when in fact, those people you think are super happy, actually not that happy. Some of them are really depressed. They're very sad. Some of the happiest seeming people, actually some of the saddest people in reality. You know, I gave the sport of boxing my whole life. I dedicated my whole life to the sport of boxing. And all I ever wanted to do was put my family, my mother and my father in a comfortable position. My dad is a millionaire. My mother, she's a millionaire. And the investments were, were for my grandchildren, not just my children. Yeah. You know, put them in a position. That's really what it's about. The reason why grandmama's cooking was so good, because she didn't cook Sunday dinner, Sunday evening. She started Saturday night. And she let it marinate overnight. That's why it was so good. The reason why your gift is not like all these other gifts that are so microwavable, is because God's put something in you that is too great. And you got to know that what's inside of you is so great that, that it's taking a little bit longer because God did not call you to be microwavable. If you are willing to take the harder way, the more complicated one, the one with more failures at first than successes, the one that has ultimately proven to have more meaning, more victory, more glory, then you will not regret it. Now, this is your time. <laughs> <laughs> the light of new realization shines on you today. I think that um, personal ambition is worth fighting for. It, it really is something that if you don't fight for it, you're going to regret it for the rest of your life. And if you regret it, you can be an unhappy person. If you're an unhappy person, it's going to affect your family. So you can see the chain of command all the way down, that yeah. it can be pretty devastating. Um, we, you know, the common answer is we fight for a family. Uh, yeah, but fighting for family starts with you. Mm -hmm. So you gotta fight for peace of mind.